Now we have defined the standard part function, and we have a theorem for how to uh, manipulate the standard part function. Let's look at some examples of actually um, computing the standard part of some expression. So let's say that we know that um, oh, the standard part of some symbol, uh, so the standard part of, say, b is equal to 6. Uh, I don't know what b is, it's some hyperreal number, but I do know that it's infinitely close to 6. Um, and um, let's say that epsilon is a infinitesimal. Then if I look at the standard part of b plus, I don't know, let's say uh, 3 epsilon minus epsilon squared. So I'm looking at this whole expression. I want to say, well, what is the standard part of this new hyperreal number? So I've taken some infinitesimal. I'm adding it to a hyperreal number whose standard part is 6, um, multiplying by 3, doing all this business. So um, this is where knowing this theorem is very useful because it says uh, by statement 2 that I can distribute across addition and subtraction. I can also distribute across multiplication and division and, multi and powers, all all these things so I can manipulate this and I'm going to do it very uh, I'm just going to do it step by step so using the uh, first the second part of the theorem this is the standard part of B uh, plus the standard part of 3 epsilon minus the standard part of epsilon squared so um, I've got this uh, distributed across that. And this is equal to, oops, come here, pen. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, we know the standard part of B is already equal to 6. So that's equal to 6 plus now uh, standard part uh, distributes across multiplication. So this is going to be the standard part of 3 times the standard part of epsilon minus, and the standard part distributes across powers. So this will be the standard part of epsilon squared. So this is 6. 3 is a real number, and its standard part then is 3 itself. It's infinitely close to itself. Standard part of epsilon, though, it's an infinitesimal, so its standard part is 0 by the previous theorem. So this is 3 times 0 minus, and again, standard part of epsilon is 0, so this is 0 squared. So finally, this is equal to 6. So if standard part of b was is 6, then if I add, really what I'm seeing is if I add an infinitesimal, it doesn't change anything. The standard part is still 6. Nothing gets changed. So that's a, one maybe a little bit more uh, interesting. Let's say that um, uh, x is a positive real number and um, delta x, so we've got x is a positive real number and delta x is an infinitesimal. Uh, this will be a very common uh, occasion uh, where we've got some positive real number or a, a real number that's a variable, and we'll use delta x to denote um, an infinitesimal. Then we can look at the standard part of um, square root of x plus delta x. Um, plus the square root of x squared minus 3 delta x. Uh, so we'll do x squared minus 3 delta x. So we want to know the standard part of this. Well, again, as, in the, as we saw in the theorem, standard part distributes across addition. So this is the standard part of the square root x plus delta x 
plus the standard part of square root x minus 3 delta x. And uh, from the theorem, we know that the standard part distributes, so as long as we're positive, which is a requirement, as long as we're positive, the standard part will distribute across roots. Uh, so any root, in particular this one, we're the square root. So this is the square root of the standard part of x plus delta x plus the square root of the standard part of x minus 3 delta x and the standard part distributes by addition so we've got the square root of the standard part of x plus the standard part of delta x plus the square root of the standard part of x minus the standard part of 3 delta x. Now the standard part of x is, since it's a real number, the standard part of x is x. And the standard part of delta x, since it's an infinitesimal, is 0. So these two I can already simplify. This is uh, the standard, or this is the square root of x plus 0. Plus, now again, that's the standard part of x, which is a real number, so it's just x. And I'll need to split this up, so this is minus standard part of 3 times the standard part of delta x which is 3 times 0, so this whole thing just becomes uh, square root of x. And this is x minus, so the standard part of 3 is 3, standard part of delta x is 0, so this is 3 times 0, so this ends up being square root of x plus the square root of x, or if you will, 2 root x. So the even though we added a delta x and then subtracted a different delta x here, looking at the sum of these two radicals and looking at the real part of it, the standard part of it, we end up with just, we get root x plus root x. Um, another example here, uh, let's say that um, epsilon is a, um, a positive infinitesimal. So let's say that epsilon is an infinitesimal. Let's go ahead and, um, it doesn't have to be positive, but let's make sure it's not zero. So it's an infinitesimal, but not zero. And look at the standard part of um, the fraction, oh, I don't know, e to the fourth plus uh, or minus e cubed plus 3 squared, or epsilon squared, sorry. Um, and we'll divide that by, um, how about 6 epsilon squared. So the uh, first intuition would be to use the division rule. So we've got this rule up here that says standard part distributes across division, right? The standard part of A over B is standard part of A divided by standard part of B. However, let's just, let's go through and do it. This is the standard part of epsilon to the fourth minus epsilon cubed plus three epsilon squared divided by the standard part of six epsilon squared. Well, how is this going to work? Well, we're going to break this up across multiplication. So this is standard part of 6 times the standard part of epsilon squared. Um, but the standard part of epsilon is 0. In fact, we know already that epsilon is an infinitesimal. From all the work we did in the previous section, epsilon squared we know is an infinitesimal, and 6 times epsilon is an infinitesimal. So this whole thing's infinitesimal, 
and its standard part is zero. But that's a bad thing because I'm now dividing by zero here. So I actually can't apply that rule. And again, if we look at this fine print of that theorem, it says that this only works if the standard part of B is itself. So we can't be dividing by something whose standard part is zero. Or really, what it's saying is we can't be dividing by an infinitesimal to use this rule. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a standard part. Um, unless this number is infinite, uh, which we're not sure of yet, um, but as long as this is a finite hyperreal, then it does have a standard part. So we should be able to uh, compute its standard part. So we'll do algebra first, we'll do some simplification. Especially it should be kind of jumping out at you that I've got epsilons everywhere in the top and the bottom, and so rewriting this, I could see this as the standard part um, epsilon. So this epsilon squared uh, will cancel. So this epsilon squared cancels with this power here. We use that to do a two. Cancels with this, reduces it down to a one, and then it cancels completely with that. And so now, rewriting this, I get epsilon squared minus epsilon plus three, all divided by six. And now, notice that my denominator is no longer infinitesimal. So now I can use the rule. So this is equal to, and I'm, I'm gonna do a few steps at once. I think we've seen uh, this done very meticulously so we can kind of go faster. So this is the standard part of epsilon squared minus the standard part of epsilon plus the standard part of 3 all divided by the standard part of 6. And that is equal to standard part of epsilon squared. Again, we could just go very slow and pull the exponent out, but we know epsilon squared is an infinitesimal. So this is zero. Standard part of epsilon is zero. And the standard part of three is three. And the standard part of six is six. So the standard part of this uh, hyperreal is simply one half. And we'll do a few more exercises in the next video.